I would like to give you an overview of this inclined plane before we get into the details. Inclined plane is exactly that, a plane that is inclined and you would have a mass sitting on it and this poor mass would slide down. And that's the only thing it could do. You think it would slide up? No. It could stay there if there's enough friction, but eventually it will slide down. And then we want to know what the acceleration is and all that. But let's understand that uh, this inclined plane is nothing but uh, something in between two systems that you know. That is, you know the free fall, the vertical motion, the things falling off the cliff and all. You studied that, so you know. And it's also the other extreme of inclined plane is a flat plane where things may or may not slide. So these two situations, this uh, flat land situation and this vertical cliff situation, you studied for some time, so you know them. But now we want to see what happens if it's somewhere in the middle. As you may expect, the result is something in the middle. It would not slide as fast as a free fall, but it will slide faster than uh, not moving. So what happens here? Well, we'll systematically examine this. The first thing that I want you to pay attention to is what doesn't change. There's one thing that does not change. That is the mass of the object here. This box would have certain mass. And because we have gravity going here, we will have certain weight coming down. So the weight of this will not change. Why should it change as it moves uh, up and down, right, on, the, on, the, um, grab the, on this uh, inclined plane here? So you have about to see for yourself how this arrow, the length is the, the weight and the uh, direction is the direction it's going to. Neither of them changes. So please pay attention here. It's pointing straight down with that length. And as I move it here, it will still point straight down with that length. And that's that. So whenever you got to draw this uh, free body diagram business, please draw that first because that you know and doesn't matter what the angle is, what the situation is, even if it's a free fall, even if it's uh, just uh, sitting on a table, it, it, it is there, always will be there. So just draw that. Okay, then uh, now let me show you what doesn't, well, what does change. If I decompose this vector into two parts, then I would get these two. I, I need to say something about this decomposing the vector. If I had a vector like this, I could decompose easily. I could make it into this and that. Then, of course, you do this uh, parallelogram rule, and you see I successfully decomposed this single vector into this and that. Very nice. But I could have decomposed in a different way. I could have, for example, um, the same vector I could have decomposed, say, into these two. If I use a parallelogram rule, it would come out to be the same thing. It, this becomes even more obvious if I use a head-to-tail method here. If I, here's the uh, vector that I want to uh, reconstruct by having two, uh, by having an addition of two vectors. I could, of course, do it this way and that way. Oh, yeah, these two would add up to this uh, original one that I drew. But please realize I could have done it that way too. I could have done it this plus that. There are just infinitely many ways of decomposing a vector into two components. Of all those possibilities, we are going to use this and this. Why? Because I could have done it this and that. I could have easily added up to the same vector. But why? Why those? There's a reason. First of all, this vector we want to have because we want to see how it slides down. Do you think this a block would fly up? or sink into the plane, I mean, drill into it and go that way. No, it will slide down, so that's the direction it will go. But more importantly, we want to see how much this uh, block is pressing on the plane, because that will determine the normal force. You know, when, when it's more clear when I show you in a flat plane like this. There are only two, two forces acting on this. Well, first of all, you agree this guy's not going anywhere. There's no acceleration on this. So all the forces, the net force, is canceled. How, how, well, how are they canceled? Uh, who are they anyway? There's a weight going down, and there's no more force from the plane resisting the fall. Obviously, that's why it's not falling. So in that case, those, that's, uh, those are the only two forces. But as I change the plane here, 
Oh, well, why, why don't we go here first? What are the forces acting on it? There's a gravity pulling down the weight and nothing else. That's why it falls. Now, what if I come here? What happens is that there, there are a lot of uh, arrows here, but I want you to realize that there are only two forces acting on this. There's a gravity pulling down on the object, so making uh, this weight vector here. There's only one other, that is the normal force. These are the only two forces that are acting on it. What about other arrows here? Other arrows are just the decomposition of this vector to show you uh, what it is made of. So for now, please forget this. You got only these two vectors. And when you add them up, you get a uh, third vector. The com you're adding these two vectors, you see. You have been adding those two vectors, by the way. Here you added them and you say it was zero. So now if I put it here, you add those two vectors. If I add this with that, the resultant vector is actually this one. So there are not three vectors here. There are two vectors, two forces acting on it. And when you add them up, they become this force that is parallel to the plane. No wonder when you sit on a uh, the slide, that's the direction you move. You, you never realized here, you, but you, when you sat on the slide, you knew your body's weight was still there. You were not floating. But the support from the slide was somewhat unsettling. It was not sitting straight. It was kind of inclined. So what you're feeling is that the uh, slide was supporting the normal force in an oblique angle like that, not straight up. So as a result, your forces were not balanced. So, so as a result, you felt kind of pulled toward front, and that was the resultant vector you were feeling. So I hope I made it clear. There are only two forces here, normal force and the weight. Okay, very good, but the um, weight, we know what it is, is mg. But what is this normal force? It's changing all the time. There's nothing, and the entire weight is a uh, normal force in this case. So how do I know? As it turns out, normal force is exactly the um, perpendicular component to the plane of this weight here. That's why they are showing you these two vectors here. But what's most important is that this, this um, component here, y direction component of the weight, because that is the normal force. How do we compute that? Well, I just told you, it's a cosine, right? Why is it cosine? Well, let me show you here. Let's talk about the normal force here. Um, here, normal force is in 100% of the weight, right? And if I go here, the normal force is gone. It's 0% of the weight. Huh. So at, let's see what's happening here. At 0 degrees, normal force was 100% or 1. At 90 degrees, normal force was 0% or 0. Okay, what kind of function gives you one when it's zero degree? And what kind of function would give you zero when it's 90 degrees? It is cosine. Cosine of zero is one. Cosine of 90 equals zero. So therefore, the, this component is cosine of the weight. And normal force matches and cancels this much. So this is always the weight times the cosine of the angle here, okay? So the, uh, the, I'm just giving you away the uh, here. Normal force is always the weight times cosine of the angle. So if you think about it, this is a very unifying general rule. In, could, in fact, you could have used it here. What's the normal force? We are so used to saying, oh, that is um, weight balanced by normal force, so it's equal to the weight, but you know, <laughs> just to make a, just give you, your, your teacher a hard time, you can just start incorporating the angle into it. Oh, normal force is mass times gravity times cosine of theta. And then you plug in theta equals zero, therefore cosine becomes one, and the next line you say equals mg. And your teacher cannot say anything because you're correct. It's, that's a very good way of annoying your teachers. Don't do that to me. Okay, so what if it was here? You know there's no normal force, nobody's supporting anything, but you could insist that, oh, I think there's a normal force. And that is mass times gravity times um, cosine of 90 degrees. Oh, cosine of 90 is zero. So normal force 
is zero. You could just uh, prolong the pain that way. Okay, so that's the story here. So you got this, as I repeatedly told you, you got this uh, weight pulling down, gravitational force, and this normal force acting here. If you add these two, what would you get? You know, adding two vectors is equivalent to um, subtracting the opposite. So here I have gravitational force. Let's rewrite it. I have this gravitational force. This is vector addition now, so I got to use this. And I have normal force here. And I want to see what, co what comes out from there. This is actually a slightly difficult way of doing things. It's not so obvious. The answer is this, by the way, but it doesn't come out as easily. So I will play a uh, mental gymnastics here. So I will just subtract the negative of normal force. This indeed seems like just a manipulation of the symbols, but guess what I'm doing here? I am subtracting this, see this negative Fn is equal to this force here because it's going to the opposite direction. So I'm asking, what is this minus that? Okay. So if I call this A, this call this B, these are vectors. I'm asking, what is vector A minus vector B? If I call this vector C here, I, uh, of course, I do not know how to subtract those. But one thing I know, though, vector B plus vector C was vector A. So if you wanted to know what the vector A minus vector B was, subtract vector B from both sides, you get vector C. Ha! Huh. So this answer is vector C. Wow, what a convoluted way. Your teacher would never show you this. No, no textbook would go through the step that I showed you. But this shows you why when you add this force of gravity with the normal force, you always get this force that is sliding down the plane, which is kind of comforting to know because now you know next time you go up and up a slide and sit on it, and you will never fly off to the moon like that. That would be, I mean, you didn't even say goodbye to your family. It would be pretty shocking if you just fly off like that. But this physics vector guarantees you that you will not sink to the ground going going through the slide nor you will fly off to the sky, you will just slide down the ramp, which you knew. Your dog knows about this, but your dog cannot show you why it had to be that way. Here I am showing this to you. So these are the, um, the things that you should know about this inclined plane. But with what force would it go down? That's what I want to show you here. You know, you could add all these vectors and compute that, but I just showed you that the, uh, this component the, how, how the force that you are sliding down the ramp is this. In other words, if you take the weight and then take the, uh, what is it, x component of it, then you will get that. Well, let me show you what I mean by that. Let's make it obvious here. If I had this, um, how, with what force would you f go down the slide? <laughs> well, you're going down with a full gravitational force. This is called falling. So... We don't call it even sliding in this case. You're just falling. That's it. Okay. What if the plane was like that? With what force would you slide down the ramp? What slide down? You don't move. Let's think about it. So when it was zero degree, you didn't go anywhere. And it was 90 degree, you're at full strength of the gravity. What kind of function does that to you? When it's zero degree, zero. When it's 90 degree, one. That is sine. So sine will tell you, sine of the angle will tell you what kind of force you would feel going down the ramp. So if the uh, this angle is zero, as you noticed, when you're sitting on the floor, you don't slide. You don't start sliding, do you? So as the angle goes down, it, it goes up, then you, this gets stronger because angle is growing and you're taking sine of it. As you know, the sine graph looks something like this, right? What's important is that as the angle is growing, your sine is growing, so that's why it's climbing up. Okay, and that's how it goes. So you can see graphically that that's how, how it goes. So the, in, in, um, theory, in theory, 
we are computing the sliding force by adding the um, weight with the normal force. But normal force was computed by taking cosine of it. And because of this uh, vector addition that I showed you, this sliding force will always be the sine component of the, um, this weight. So uh, once you become good at this, you don't compute this normal force and then add to this vector. That's too much work. You just grab this vector, the weight vector, and you use this angle and take sine and pew, there we go. We got it. Of course, not all slopes are so slippery that it's to start sliding without any friction. Then there comes the friction, right? That will just hold it back. But how big is this friction, friction of force? As usual, it is coefficient of friction. If it's sliding, it would be k, right? Of what? Normal force. So if you want to see how much you're sliding, yes, you got to take sine of the weight, sine of the angle times the weight, to see how, for, how much, what, what force is pushing it down. But at the same time, you got to take cosine of the angle multiplied by weight to get the normal so that you can multiply by the coefficient of friction so that you know how much is re resisting your motion. So to, for the actual acceleration, you have to not only take this um, force that is going down, but you got to subtract the uh, friction that is holding it back up. Only then you would know how this would slide down. So this is how it slides down. Compare that acceleration it's going through. Compare it with, say, when the angle is pretty steep, uh, very steep, it would just falls straight through. Compare that with when the thing is just not inclined at all. But this, I, I have no point in showing. But what I wanted to show you is, Normally, because of the friction, when you're inclined to just dinky angle like this, it would not slide. But this is a simulation of a frictionless surface, then you will see it, albeit very slowly, you will see it accelerating. And accelerating is an amazing thing. It's getting faster and faster. So toward the end, it becomes a pretty respectable velocity sliding down the ramp. So that has been the overview of this inclined plane business.